Hello everybody, Nikki from Gracie's house here. I am here, I promise, hi, hi. Those of you on Instagram, if you drop me some messages as you come on and watch me, you can see that's gone live on, on, um, on my phone, that's just popped up. And anyone that comes on on Facebook, do the same. Pop me a little, little message. I'm gonna just say hi in the comments on Facebook. And then usually I start seeing people. So I'm hoping this is gonna happen. Okay, right guys, I've got you here. I'm out the front of my workshop today. It is so hot and this is partly the reason I'm not on camera today because quite frankly, I'm a melty, sweaty mess because of the heat. So you get to see more of the piece and less of me. Ah, I can see some people registering on Facebook. So that's looking promising as well. So we are gonna work on this chest of drawers here today. I'm using Wondrous Floral too. So it's one of my favorites. Both the Wondrous Florals are beautiful um, and Lush Floral. I like the Lush Floral set. Anything floral really. Um, this is a laminate chest of drawers, very, very heavy MDF, but it's got that laminate plasticky finish. So I have created a faux textured finish. I'm not sure how much of that you can see. Um, I've used paint couture embossing medium. So rather than just using a normal um, uh, primer for a laminate, tech, like a bonding primer, I decided I'd go for an embossing medium and create texture instead because it's the, the seams on the laminate weren't particularly great. Hi there, Erin, I've just seen you pop on. So I just figured that that, that was gonna be the best treatment for this particular piece. So I created texture all over, and then we've created this kind of summertime vibe. And these are all paint couture colors. So I've got angel eyes, I've got um, Elvis parsley, Spanish sunrise, and then candlelight is the kind of ivory color on the top. I've created even more texture right down on the bottom with couture crust. I've added a couple of scrolly molds, which are from the Redesign with Prima mold, which is called Greco Crest. Um, so that's just these two sections here that I've popped there. And I've added myself a little faux keyhole, which has come from this one, which is aptly named Keys. Nice and simple, that one. So that's my two little molds, just little additions to give a bit more interest than, um, than, the, basic, than the basic chest of drawers. So I'm using two sections from, this comes with three sheets. So one, two, three is the divide. I'm using the top section and the bottom section and I'm not using the middle section as yet. Um, just so that you know where we're working with. Okay, just making sure if you've got any comments, if you've got any questions, I'm going to start with this piece because I am ever so slightly going to overlap these. And, but I really want this peony to, to definitely be sticking out. So I want to make sure, and this dark flower here. So I'm going to start on this section. So let's just pop this over here. How did I get the edges of the paint colors to blend so well into one another? With this particular piece, um, because I'm using texture, I used a very dabbing motion. I just used chip brushes. Um, and as I said, I used a dabbing motion. So it was much more of a, I wanted to create a, a kind of water, a watercolor, more like a painterly finish, a cloudy sort of blend. So, so that was it really. That's, um, I'm just gonna trim off. So what I've decided I'm going to do for these pieces is I'm gonna run them along the bottom of the drawer. Because, because this sticks proud out here, I didn't want to get, I want to wrap it round and I didn't want to make a mess of, I've got this crusty texture. So I've decided to run it from the bottom of the bottom drawer. So I'm just going to cut that slither off so that I can run it right up against the bottom edge. So I'm being relatively careful, but because it's going to be on that bottom edge, it will wrap maybe slightly around on that bottom drawer. I just wanted to get rid of most of that to keep out of my way. I have both my transfer tools. So the one you get, you get a stick in every tube. And, and then I've also got my transfer, my trusty transfer tool. But then any of you that watch me on a regular basis will know that I tend to sort of switch between the two quite frequently. And um, 
what we have got here is an inset panel. So I'm also going to be showing you how to work around that. So we'll just, we'll get started and I'll show you as we go along. So this is, this is one that's, um, you can cut it about, but it will take, you know, you've really, you've really got to know where you want to, your cut lines, because the flowers are already, the, the, the bouquet is already created for you. Some of the transfers are in sections where you can build your own, um, build your own image sections. But this one, because it's already built for you, essentially, you need to, you just need to think about how you want to place the big sections rather than having lots of little ones to build up yourself. And I explained that in a very, very long convoluted way, so I apologise. So I'm first I'm going to use my craft knife to just slice down where that draw join goes. So I'm using, you can use a craft knife or um, any kind of blade, a box cutter blade. I've often got, we call them Stanley knives over here. So I'm just going to do that. So that get, I'm kind of giving myself sections to work in rather than making it feel so overwhelming. I'm going to start with this section here. It's You've got grooves, so you need to get into those grooves. And if you watched last week's, I've been applying these to the texture. I'm just trying to keep my eye on, make sure I'm not missing any comments as well. Um, these apply really well. Paint Couture, even with the texture, has got a very, very smooth finish and um, it plays very nicely with the transfers. So I haven't got to worry about anything there. I'm not going to be overly distressing these transfers like I did last week, but I don't, I'm not worried if it's not perfect either, because like I said, we've gone for this textured, the summertime kind of feeling. Um, yeah, I just want to, I just want to get them on there and then We'll work out, we might do a bit of distressing, but not, not to the level that I did last week, as I said. Put that down there. I'm just gonna get that groove stuck down as well. You'll see why I'm doing it this way round in just a second. So I want to get the frame stuck down so then I can cut that inset panel. And this is, for me, this is the best way I've found of doing this. So I'm just going over that edge. Might use my plastic one just to get along there. So we just want that stuck down in all those grooves. And that bit's gonna blow away, isn't it? It's a real toss up between melting in the workshop and coming here and um, Oh, I've missed a question on Instagram. I'm just going to scroll back of the left side. Can you move the camera so we can see more? Okay, yep, sorry. There we go. Is that better? There we go. Apologies. Um, I'm glad I looked up and caught that one. <laughs> So I'm going to just make sure that's really got into that crease again, all the way around. Come out a little bit there. Okay, and this is what I was talking about. So we've now got this inset panel to talk to, to sort out. So for me personally, this is the way I find deals with this better. Okay, I'm gonna move that up again, make sure I haven't missed anything since. Okay, so similarly where I cut down here to um, separate the two parts that are going to be on that drawer edge, I'm gonna run my knife, my blade, and I'm gonna use the, the inset panel as my guide. I'm gonna run along there all the way down until that stops. And I'm going to do exactly the same over here. I'm going to use that edge as my guide. I'm going to run that all the way along. Because what we haven't got is when you, when you have an inset panel like this, we can't fold the transfer here and fold it there and fold it there. It, it's going to move somewhere you're going to have, 
you're gonna have to jiggle it around a bit. So as I said, this for me personally is the way I've found gives you um, gives you the best finish, the best control. I'm just trying to find that edge there. There we go. I'm gonna do that there. I'm gonna come, whoopsie, there we go. Down to there. And then we can remove that piece and we'll actually be fitting that right into that inset panel. So I'm gonna be pushing that into there. And we know it's gonna fit because we've used the edges as our, as our frame. So that's a really, really easy way to tackle those inset panels. Just making sure I've not missed anything. Okay, so we can crack on and get that piece done. Oh, what a lovely breeze has just come over my, at this end of the garden. That's really nice. We're supposed to be having rain and thunder this afternoon and there's barely a cloud in the sky. I'm not going to complain about the heat, only a little bit. <laughs> okay. So has anyone used this transfer before? Or would you like to use it and you haven't, you're not really sure how to go about it or what to put it on? So always be careful when you start to peel your top sheet off because you just need to make sure that the adhesive's taken and carry on rubbing as you're pulling back your top sheet. It's just worth taking that little extra time to make sure that everything's stuck down. We'll, we'll also be, I'm just gonna switch sides actually, over here, so that I'm not stretching right away across the camera. You can see what I'm doing a bit better here. So I'm going to keep on lifting that top sheet all the way along. It's just getting caught on some of the texture that I've created on the, on the paintwork actually. I've got these really, really cute um, knobs to go on this as well. Just a little bit there hasn't come up. What's everybody doing today? Where are you watching from? Let me know. So can you see, even with this textured finish, it's really quite going on quite nicely. I'm just making sure all those little edges and corners are going okay as well. And then I'm going to meet in the middle. There we go. That's that first section done. So I'm going to pop back over actually now. Let's see how this uh, draw edge is going to do. If you've got an edge like this, because now we haven't got, we've not got any top sheet that's going over onto our paintwork. Grab a piece of top sheet and use that over the top. Just in case you, you might have another piece of transfer if you're layering or your paintwork you just want to protect, use another piece of top sheet and then you're not in any danger of causing any damage to your existing paintwork or a previously applied transfer if you're layering. Checking, I haven't got any questions. Come on, folks, chat to me, chat to me, talk to me. <laughs> it's really helpful on this edge to use that top sheet trick because I haven't got anything to sort of go against there. So it's really giving me a, a helping hand. And this is why it's, it's, did you see there was a bit there and it hadn't, it hadn't stuck down properly in the curve. And that's why it's really important to be patient when you're peeling your top sheet back and don't just rip it off 
assuming you've got everything to stick. Trust me, just having that little extra bit of patience will make sure you don't have any disasters that are tricky to deal with. <clears throat> Switching back over to here now. make sure those bits are stuck down where it curves where it's concave just making sure all those bits are stuck down is really important as well let's go here And I also want this bit to wrap around, so I just want to get that stuck down. And I'm just hoping that the heat from my hand is just enough to start, start activating the glue so that I'll keep it out of my way. So that's the plan anyway. That's coming up nicely. Just making sure. Any more comments, questions? No. Okay, thanks. Let's do this piece here because now I want to flip this so that I can just trim along here and we can I can do around there. I'm not gonna be moving around the cat with the camera, but I just want to do as much as I can with you on the front here. Because we've got, we've kind of got some challenges on this piece. It's not a straightforward, <clears throat> straightforward flat fronted chest of drawers. And you know, we're not all lucky to get those all of the time. I get, I get something complicated far more times than I get something that's nice and just easy and flat to apply something to. How about you guys? So I'm just going to start pulling that piece up as well. A few bits that this need pushing. My daughter and my husband laughing and gaming in the background. I'm not sure what they're doing, but they seem like they're having a good time. It's got such pretty flowers in. Um, such a mixture of flowers, really an interesting mix. I'm not going to pretend I know the names of all of them. I particularly like these and I know deep down in my head somewhere I know what they are. I want to say Sweet William, but I don't think that's right. But um, there's some really, really pretty ones in this transfer. And a real kind of eclectic mix of colours that they've used on it as well. So you can put this on such a different amount of base colours and it works so well. going to run my knife down where the, the drawer hits the back of the set of drawers here too so that we can just do around that corner and then we can take that piece off we've got all sorts of concave sections and creases and those inset panels to deal with here but if you take it piece by piece, it makes it more manageable. So I'm just going around that edge. I'm, obviously I can't show you that piece, but I'm just going 
going around there, making sure all those bits are down. Need to just cut down there, missed a bit. There we go. So I'm constantly rubbing, like you can see, just to, just to make sure that I'm not missing any pieces as I pull my top sheet off. And there we go. That's perfect. And then I'm going to get a cloth, and we're just going to burnish over the top. Burnish basically just means rub over. And we are we're rubbing all of those edges. We're rubbing into all of the grooves, just to make sure that the contact between the back of the transfer and your piece of furniture or your, whatever your project is, is, is great. There's no, you don't want any air trapped because that will cause your transfer to lift. So we're just rubbing over those edges and making it nice and smooth. You may, if you've got, if you've got deep grooves, you may get a little bit of cracking there, but we've, We've not got too much there. So can you see how that, in, sitting it into that inset panel, um, it, it just, um, it, you don't have to worry about like creasing it or folding it down. Lynn, what's that I'm using to flatten the transfer? This is just a duster because I've run out of my microfiber cloths and it's the only thing I could grab just before I came on. So this is just, you know, like a, a household um, duster man-made yellow duster um so there we go that's that first section done let's carry on where's my stick and we're basically doing exactly the same as we've just done on that other piece we're going to cut down that draw side so that's separate perfect might do that edge first and then i know that that's done We've got just a little bit there. Can you see that we're going to cut for the inset? Not massive though at all. So we can quite easily follow that line. Make my arm out of the way. There we go. Just peel that piece off. Tuck that into our inset. And that's just that. It's just there's the top of that one flower and the leaf that we're doing in there. So that's not too tricky at all. The cute little white poppy there. There we go. And can you see by just cutting those, um, by cutting these insets, you're dealing with smaller sections. You're not having to, to sort of stress too much about dealing with a huge panel. You're, you're breaking it down so it's much easier to manage. Okay. So I'm going to push it into that crack there and that one there and then we'll just work our way along like we did before a little bit of a crevice there just gonna be careful over that edge careful little bug I'm gonna be careful working my way around this bottom of this drawer I'm just sticking that down there and push that in there with my fingers the heat again the heat from your fingers especially on a day like today will help to activate that adhesive as well Steph did it. What is this decal called? Where can you find it? So this particular one is called Wondrous Floral 2. Um, once this, once I finish the, um, the live, I can put the details in so you can find a retailer. I'll put all the details in the description on Instagram, on IGTV. And 
I'll do the same on Facebook because I've just remembered I haven't added it today. Who have I got there? Hi, Sam. Hi, Leo. Hi, Sue. On Facebook peeps. It's a pretty, it's a really pretty one, this. I mean, they are, they're all pretty. Who am I kidding? They're all pretty. But I, this is one of my favourites. And it just goes with so many different colours. I'm going to switch over to that other side so I can get my arm out of the way. A little bit. So you can burnish with your fingers, but particularly when it's so warm, I prefer using a cloth because I know it's dry, although I'm pushing it down with my fingers there. When I'm rubbing over like I was just now with the, with the cloth, um, I just worry that any moisture in my hands <clears throat> uh, might just stick to the transfer. So I do, I do tend to use a cloth more so. But that's, that's just a personal thing. As you start getting familiar with using the transfers, you'll work out what you, you know, what you prefer to do. So like I say, I will do round there, but you can't see and I don't want to get involved in moving all of the cameras and stuff. So Sharon, you're just joining. It is such a beautiful one, isn't it? It's ju I just, yeah, the colours in it are fab. It, it looks so good. There's so many, so many different colours, so many different flowers. There's a little bit tropical going on. There's some peonies later on we're going to look at. So I'm going to use this other piece. I'm just going to trim that bottom edge off. So each piece of your transfer, regardless of what size, you will have somewhere there will be a join. Most of them have a join. So you just your best bet is to trim those off. Um, one of their other brand ambassadors, Ros, from New Old Finds, has got a really, really great video. Because the way the, the transfers are produced... There's a print line and that's at the edge of where these joins would be. So on lighter colours, you can sometimes see a little join line. If you trim really, really close, it takes that edge off and it will sort that problem out for you. So um, it's always good to try that if you've got a particular transfer. So I'm going to put this, like I said, I'm going to overlap it slightly. I absolutely, this is like my favourite piece of the whole transfer. I'm just going to move you around a little bit more on. Hang on, I think I probably need to tighten that up. Can you see what I'm doing now? Yes, that's moved around with you. Okay, so I'm taking my whole back sheet off. And we're basically doing the same over here. I'm just going to overlap it that little bit. How lush is that going to look? Lovely, lovely, lovely. Yeah, I like that. So pop it down on those high points that you want it to be sat at. I'm going to do the same again over this side. Let's just get that out of the way. I'm going to... Just squidge that down a little bit. There we go. That's better. It wasn't quite sitting level. And luckily, I was able to just lift that up there. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to just cut through there, which is where my drawer is. I've left my tools over that side. 
I'm going to start, I'm going to start at the bottom this time. Sometimes when layering, so I'm only doing a small amount of layering here, sometimes you might find that you need to apply a little bit more pressure. I don't particularly find that is a problem for me, but you might do. You shouldn't have to. Some people have suggested adding a, a top coat in between transfer layers. You shouldn't need to do that. I've never had to do that. those concave sections so that we've got it nice and stuck down and then we can cut that inset panel out again oh, and I've got little little bugs crawling all over me it's so weird. where's my knife where have I put my knife down there it is right next to me whoops <laughs> hi from Spain thank you for watching thanks for watching guys it's always um it's always lovely to know where you're all spying me from. So you could measure this. I just, I just find this is the easiest way for me. But again, you know, you find, you find the ways that work for you best. I'm just gonna push that down. There's my inset panel done. At least the inset panels are nice and flat, eh? Not like all the surrounding parts. <laughs> I wondered how to do this. I make it look easy. Bev, I'm glad you think it looks easy. It is, a, it is the most simple way for doing it for me. Um, if you've got, there's, there's other ways of dealing with creases and insets. Personally, for me, this is the, the easiest way. This is where you see, I said to you, didn't I, that I switch between my two tools. Now, the, the sticks are great, um, but I do find that sometimes, because this is a little bit thinner, you can get into, um, I go, I just need to get into that edge. It doesn't want to stick. There we go. And I just couldn't get in there with the stick. And this is where these tools come into their, their own, is when you've got these little smaller details try and work with. But you can see how well this is going on even with the textured surface that I've created. Um, this one's textured using embossing medium from Paint Couture and then painted over. Last week I was using it over a salt wash finish and they go on equally as well on both of those finishes. So it doesn't have to be a completely smooth oops, finish that you're working with. Last week I did a much more distressed finish so it was even less important but it just stuck so well. Okay. Sure. Melinda, it's lovely isn't it? It's really cute. And I wanted it to look quite organic, so I wanted it to sort of look like it was growing up. I, this texture was sort of a little bit grungy. I'm probably going to add some waxes and things, I imagine, at some point. I'm just going to use that top sheet again. So just go back to that top sheet trick where we use just another section to go over that edge so we're not causing any damage to our paintwork or to our inset panel where the transfer is because if you slip you could scratch that bugs <laughs> bugs everywhere so 
So we're just going to go along and repeat the process that we did on the other side. Make sure you just gently tuck that under the, you know, wrap it around that bottom edge. Sheila, you love this transfer. I think it, it I think it's it's really difficult for this to not make anything look fabulous. So did you see there? I just peeled a bit back and it hadn't stuck down. There was just a section that started to rip off. So I've just popped it back down and you can't even see where that lifted. So you just need to constantly be aware of um, checking, continuously rubbing. Do this edge now, so I'm going to do that same thing again. Get into our grooves into our concave areas. Like I say, normally you might get a little you might get a little peek of my melting sweaty face today, but I just thought it'd be far more entertaining to see more of the project and less very much less of me today. Okay, let's just wrap that piece around the corner. Wrapped. I'm going to cut that edge. So this is my side of my drawer where it joins, just using the drawer itself to guide my knife. It works very well that way. I'm just wrapping that round that top edge of the drawer now, just so that we can make sure that that's stuck. Most of that's stuck down. And that little bit there. And we can just start lifting and revealing back this side as well. Sorry guys, if I just keep pausing, it's just because the camera's not right in front of me, I'm just going between working and checking that I'm not missing anything. So let's just get that side of the drawer. I'm so glad I didn't do it today in the workshop because I'm so hot just here and, and I'm in the shade here. I can't even imagine how hot I would have been doing all of this in there. And let's just get that final piece done as well. So that can go along that edge. And I think I'm just going to wrap, there's so, such a small amount of those flowers, I'm just going to wrap those in. And this is where you can do this because it's not that full sheet. It's when you've got a full sheet that you can't, you can't wrap around three corners because you wouldn't have enough 
of it. But when you've only got these little sections, you can just wrap those corners around and it works fine. And I love hydrangeas, so this is a particular favourite section of mine as well. Of all colours, I love hydrangeas. Let's just do that leaf. I'm just cutting there so that I can actually get that piece wrapped around. And there we go. And I've got the creases and I'm just going to go around that part of the drawer. So let's get the cloth, we'll get rid of those two bits. Let's get my cloth. This is a really important part of adding your transfer, just the, 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 the rubbing down and the burnishing in. Because this is where if you have got any little air bubbles, if you just pop it with your craft knife and then push it down to make that contact, don't, don't drag anything through it, just pop it and push the air down. And when you're working with a darker background, you'll, you'll see the adhesive line around the edge of the transfer, and people call this the halo. But doing this on the edges and everywhere will, will practically diminish, practically make your halo disappear. What do we think? Looking good, hey? quite pleased with that as again I've, I'll do this side and later on I'm going to leave the transfers there but I thought I would just get some of the um, maybe decor wax let's have a little look big tub of wax um, what metallic should we add to this let's have a little think I think that's going to be too orangey yeah oh crikey and it's squirting out because everything's so hot <laughs> we may end up just going with the classic. Oh, which one is that? Paint or... No. I do like Element. So it's sort of a coppery colour. It's the Element Decor Wax. It is a copper sort of tone, but it's not a full-on, a full-on copper tone. So let me just show you. Oh, it's so soft. So that's that's element and then this is the rich copper which is from the art alchemy range which will probably have a more of a redness to it yeah so can you see the differences so this is my element it's a bit more subtle and this is the rich copper i think that's the one i'm going to go for because i always use eternal and it's i think i'm going to use this other one so let's go for element pretty make sure I've not got anything else on any of my fingers everything's really soft so can you see I'm going to go down here um let's just bring that Facebook camera down a little so I'm just going to use it on these just to highlight and show pop those details a bit just on the tops pretty I like that. And I'll do it on the keyhole as well. We can move those cameras up in a minute. Do that. It goes really nice with, with the, um, this is Angel Eyes that's down the bottom. 
There's also a colour, you may not be able to pick it up in the cameras, it's like an iridescent green, it's called Green Iris, and that's beautiful as well. So it sits back quite nicely with both of those. Um, let's, you can see, let me move this camera up for Facebook and we'll pop a bit onto that keyhole as well. Melinda, it's cute, isn't it? So I've, I've painted in the centre, so I ha this hasn't got, um, there is no keyhole, totally fake. So I painted in the middle in a, with a charcoal colour. I'm just highlighting those details. Go in there a bit more. There we go. Okay, I think I'm going to, there's going to be some other work to do, but I, I haven't decided um, how to move forward 100% with this one. So I, um, what the hell are we doing? Yeah, I think we're doing well there. We've done okay. Uh, so guys, thank you for joining me. So this is my take on a kind of summertime, spring summertime vibe piece of furniture using the Wondrous Floral to transfer. Let's get that out so you can have another look at that one. Okay, so that's the transfer. Melinda, they are, they're cute colours, aren't they? I think they just, they look really nice. They're not they're still summery, but not too full on vibrant. So I'm, I'm really, really pleased how that's worked. Um, I'm gonna have a think about what else I'm gonna do to it. Cause I think I'm gonna add some maybe shading and things with some other waxes or pastes. I'm not hundred percent sure yet. So we'll leave it there for today. Thank you everyone for joining me. Once it's gone live on both, um, on both Instagram and on Facebook, I'll pop a load of links in there so you can find a retailer um or buy through my link and um do you know what guys i'm i'm actually away for the next three weeks you get me again this week there's another live on friday afternoon so go and check out the events section uh on facebook and melinda perfect for your jewelry armoire oh lovely so yeah on facebook there's um events and then on instagram i'm gonna have to try and remember what time of the day it is I've got a feeling it's, it might be this time again. It might be four, but don't quote me on that. There's so much going on, my brain's not working very well. But check events, because I know it's set up in an event. Okay, guys, thanks for watching, and I will catch you again on Friday, hopefully. Thanks, thanks again, bye.